I've been talking about equipment, fads, things like that, and it got me thinking about some of my own equipment choices. I don't know that I've given a really good explanation as to why I use what I use. It's evolved over time. And it was very different, you know, before, you know, this stroke thing happened when I still had two arms. Now that I have one working arm and hand and I walk with a bit of a limp, I have to consider things a little differently than a lot of people. Can I physically handle it? The first thing that I came up with after my stroke was a lightweight pair of RCF 410As with a handle on top. They were little 8-inch speakers and Frankenstands. That worked. It worked actually pretty well. Frankenstands are really heavy though. I also used to scrim those speaker stands, which was a lot of extra work. It's evolved over time, and I'm on to the column array stuff. It's really cool for a lot of reasons. One thing, I don't have to pick anything up in the air and put it on a tripod. Don't need a tripod at all. Definitely don't need to scrim anything and it goes together real nice. Now, these are the Evolve 30 amps, like I may have mentioned, and it's essentially these two extension poles here and this top piece that just goes on the top of those poles. It's super easy to put together. I have a set of Evolve 50s, and they're very nice, but I prefer the 30M for the type of events that I'm doing. And anymore, it's weddings between, I don't know, 80 people and 130 sometimes 150, they do just fine for me. The Evolve 50s, yeah, they're capable of more, but I don't need more. These seem to fit the bill really well, and I know the weight's not much different. We're going from a 10-inch speaker to a 12-inch speaker with the 50s, but yeah, this is just fine for what I want to do. My favorite speaker right now. Most people say to themselves, okay, I'm doing parties of 250 people. I need a system that'll work for 250 people. I couldn't do it that way. I had to build a system that I could physically handle and then figure out what it was capable of. And that was gonna dictate what type of parties I did. Now, luckily, when I put together that first system with the RCF 408As, is what they were, they were 408s, I put a 12 inch subwoofer with them. And in my brain, I was thinking, okay, I can probably do parties of about 100 people with these. And most people told me the same thing. You're not going to be able to do any more than 100 people with a little bitty system like this. Truth be told, it was the most capable system I'd ever built. I could do parties of 250 people with that system. No problem. The highs were there. The mids were there. The lows were not completely overbearing, but they were there. No, it wasn't the biggest system, but it was very clean and I got compliments on it. So that was good news. And it's been like that with everything that I use, with lighting or whatever. But yeah, right now this, for like I said, probably about 150, safely 150. This is an, an amazing setup for me and my sound objectives. Some of the advantages that came along with this, because again, I'm looking at the ease of use first. Then as soon as I start using it, wow. I like it better than horn loaded tops because in this column you've got little full range speakers you know full range not a horn full range speakers so the sound is much smoother than horn loaded horn loaded kind of honks right and it can be kind of harsh especially if you're close to the speaker in a near field situation these on the other hand they don't do that they're real smooth it's kind of like your home stereo or your home theater system they're not overbearingly loud, yet they're clear and people can hear everywhere. The frequency these speakers are producing are not competing with conversation levels anywhere in the room. No one's screaming at each other, not even on the dance floor. You can still talk. I don't want to take too much time on this, but I did want to show you my computer. I am running these Asus Republic of Gamers computers. They're gaming machines. And yeah, they're heavy, but there are a couple of things about it that do make my life easier. One of those things is the big 17-inch screen. I need a big screen. I can't work off a tiny little screen when I'm gigging. So that's helpful. And it's quality. I mean, if it can run 
gaming stuff, it can definitely run computer software. But the main reason that I went with something like this is because you can put two hard drives inside of this machine, two laptop hard drives, and I needed that space. A lot of people may say, well, you know, you could just get an external hard drive. That would save a big hassle, right? It's going to cost less. You can get a lightweight machine and do that. The thing is, is that when you're a disabled person and you're trying to figure out how to do these mobile events, you've got to figure out how to expedite everything, including setup. And it may not sound like a big deal to plug in an external hard drive, but that's a step I don't have to take when I've got built-in hard drives. I know it sounds weird to some of you, but it really does make my life a lot easier to have it all built in. So all I have to do is plug this machine in and run a USB from the mixer with the integrated sound card into this and I'm done. Nothing else to hook up. In the spirit of shaving weight, this is my mixer case. Don't have a controller case. Don't even own a controller right now. Back in the old days, I used to use something like a set of CDJs and a mixing board or alternately, I would have a 19 inch mixer with the rock mounted dual CD players. Remember those? Big heavy cases regardless or a coffin or something. So I had to figure out how to make this easier. What's possible? And you kind of get to the point where you want to go to bare essentials, which is what I did. Being one handed, do I really need these platters to go back and forth on? Not really. It's easier for me to just use a mouse with the internal programs on the computer. So all I really need is a mixing board if I'm running everything internal with a mouse, right? So that's what I have. Now the first mixer I got was actually a 12 inch club mixer. It was a DJ Made 50 in a big case with a laptop stand built in. That thing was heavy, but it was smaller than the coffin that I used to haul around and smaller than a 19 inch rack mount anything. And then I went down to this small little battle mixer case. The first mixer I ran was a DJM 450. I've also ran a DJM 250 Mark II. And I'm on to a different one now. This is new for this season. Uh, it's a used piece, but it works really well. Um, I'll show you what we got here, how it all works. So this is a DJM S9. And in here, I've got my wireless microphone set up that uh, I'll put over here for now. Here's my gooseneck for my microphone that actually attaches to this lid. This cable is way too long. I think this is like a 12 footer. I've actually found a smaller one that I'm gonna hook up, but this is my main lead for AC. Also have my microphone in here. And it's a, a uh, Shure SM58. Just got that recently too. So let me just get this out of the way and I'll show you a couple other things that I've done here. So in the spirit of, let's make it quick and easy. I've got these pigtails that go into my computer. I've even got an AC pigtail. I've got my power for my computer built into this case. So I don't have to hook all that stuff up. In the USB and all that, I've got it zip tied into a pigtail. This just goes into the computer. That expedites things quite a bit. And then I also have this pigtail that goes into the wireless microphone setup. So I've got just a little quarter inch on here and then the AC for the wireless mic receiver. I wanted to put a case together where the mic was built in, but I just couldn't find anything that made sense. And, you know, the more I thought about it, sometimes, you know, well, my antennas I keep in here too. Here's the microphone antennas. The more I thought about it, sometimes you have to move this around or get this a little higher up in the air to, you know, get good signal on most wireless, on some wireless microphones, depending on your environment. So it just made sense to have it separate. It's not a big deal with the pigtails to plug all of that in and put the antennas on when you need it. This 
board, unfortunately, only has one microphone input. But what I've done is I, I'm running my microphone off the microphone input of this DJM S9. I'm running the microphone receiver off of the auxiliary line input. And it works fine. Because microphone receivers, you do not have to have a microphone input. You can run those line. And that's pretty cool. I used to run a DBX Go Rack on the old system. So I had compression and things like that for the microphone. But I'm not doing it here. I didn't really use it that much. And there wasn't space for it in here anyway. Because this S9 is a little wider and a little deeper than the DGM450 was. So I lost real estate back here. But it's really streamlined things. So while I've got this apart, I'm gonna go ahead and swap out this extra long 12 foot extension cord, which has always been kind of a burden. It's too long. It takes too long to wrap up into the case. It's gonna make my life a lot easier to have something different in there. I found one when I was cleaning the shop. So yeah, while it's apart, I'm just gonna do that. But yeah, this is it. And I know a lot of you, you know, like the controllers and such. I like them too, but this is just easier. It's lighter. I don't use half of the effects on this thing. I just don't. I never will. But it's quality. And for me, yeah, I, I can compromise on size. I can compromise on, you know, some functionality like a controller and all that, but I cannot compromise on sound quality or lighting quality. No, absolutely not. It's got to be good stuff. And the nice thing about having good stuff is it's reliable. You know, it's stuff's going to last forever. My 450 is in another case right now. I, I didn't get rid of it. It's something that I use for the club when I got in the club rack. This is just kind of a little upgrade for me. Aside from two XLR cables, two IEC cables, and an extension cable, that's the entire audio system. Real simple, but it's quality. It sounds great. Dispersion on the speakers is wonderful. Sound quality is wonderful. The only other thing would be the pro event table with the laptop stand that I have built for it. And you know, that's the most cumbersome thing that I have to set up. It's a lot better than a six foot banquet like I mentioned in my last video. Solves a lot of problems like table height. No more back pain. The footprint's nice. You don't have to scrim it. I think aesthetically it looks just fine. But yeah, I'm always looking for new solutions. The hardest thing to set up used to be the lighting. It's now the easiest. So if I go back and I think about how we used to do it with tripods and T-bars or even trussing, shooting light out at crowds, you know, that was usually, you know, the hardest part to set up for my systems. Most of you probably experienced the same thing. Lots of cabling, you know, lots of lifting, lots of setup. Once I had my stroke, I had to eliminate all the tripods and trussing just to streamline things. So. I went with some of the moving heads. That was a cool solution. I could put them on my tabletop and I could master slave them together with a DMX cable. Either DMX the stuff or alternately put them in a show mode that kind of made sense and let them do what they did, which I didn't like, but it did work sometimes. Aside from that, I started thinking about the uplighting solution and how, you know, that looked pretty nice. What if you did that for dance lighting? There's no tripods involved. All you have to do is plug the light in and put it on the floor. That's for static color. If you want control, you gotta DMX all the lights together in a chain and then you have to do some kind of DMX programming for them. There were some pretty simple lighting controllers that were you know, small DMX controllers from ADJ. I used those for a while. Some of them were even wireless and I used some wireless DMX solutions with PARs, and I did things like light things up behind me. For a while, I would light up white scrims that were on my speaker stands. Dog's barking, sorry about that. And then this came along. So the moving head thing, after a while, I got to thinking to myself, you know what, this is just more trouble than it's worth. I don't wanna do it anymore. And I went all PARs. And I'm using the Ape stuff. And, you know, a lot of people use some variation of this, and, and there's no wrong answer here. This just works well for me, and I'll show you why it does. I'm just going to pull out two of these. These are like the second generation Maxis. I haven't had this case open in a while. Here's the remote control for them. Just a little 
remote. And this is an RF remote, so you don't have to point it. It's not an IR remote where you got to point it right at the little sensor. No, you could point it anywhere within a 100 foot range and it works fine. So all I have to do with these is turn them on because they're battery powered. I don't have to plug them in or anything. So you just turn them on. And then the remote control is super simple. It controls the lights and you can do four banks of different lights. You can assign these to different banks and, you know, make one set do one thing and one set do another. I've done that before, but yeah, it's parts are really nice. I mean, I can do this kind of stuff for slow dances, just a, a nice fade. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera but they're fitting between colors and I can make it go faster for fast dancing if I want to and I can put them in the music mode where you know just from you know any kind of noise they do things and they're doing random things it's not like they're doing the same thing over and over again and in fact they react to things that are not just bass hits I'm not being very loud here, but if I got closer and I talked to him, you could see that they react to the sound of my voice. That's kind of neat. <laughs> so these are wonderful. I just put them around the perimeter of the dance floor, turn them on, set them down where I want them. And here's my control. No more DMX stuff, you know, no more wires, no more trussing, no more T-bars. This is the easiest part of my DJ setup. And I understand if you use other things, and that's totally cool, but understand, I'm looking for path of least resistance, quickest setup, quickest breakdown, biggest bang for the buck, too. But, you know, like I said before, the first thing I got to do is figure out what's possible. What, what can I do, reasonably do, and then after that, I figure out, you know, how it actually works. <laughs> what it's actually capable of. That's the order I have to do things in, unfortunately. You can fade these or whatever you want to do with them. They're cool. Easy control. And, and they never fail on me. I can, so I can point this anywhere and it just does stuff. I don't have to point it at a sensor like some lights. Anyway, that's why I use what I use. and Kind of how I have evolved from one thing to another. I'm always looking for easier solutions. Right now, this is the easiest lighting solution that, that I can find. I'm trying to think of what would be easier than that. I don't know. But, you know, it's all applied science. You know, this stuff comes along and you choose how to use it. Sometimes there's not always instruction manuals. I talk to my daughter about Legos all the time. She buys Lego kits because she's 26 years old and still likes to do Legos, which is fine. But she'll buy a kit to build a bird or to build a Harry Potter thing or whatever. When I was a kid... I mean, I didn't have Legos. I had other kinds of blocks, but we didn't have instructions. We just built things. We were creative and, and made things. We didn't have a blueprint. So that's how I think about this kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's all just here are the building blocks. Now build something. And, and that's what I've tried to do with my mobile system. And it works really well. I'm happy with it. So... But yeah, this works for me. It may not work for you. And again, always looking for different solutions. So that's it. This video has been long enough. I hope this made sense. I hope I've explained myself a little bit on why I do what I do and how I came to the ideas that I came to on, on how to put this stuff together. If not, then, well, I don't know. I hope you enjoyed the video anyway. <laughs> that's it. We'll see you next time. Practice and enjoy.